Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the Veg Garden. It is the 26th of July today, and so I think it's about a month since we were down here last, and a lot has happened in those few weeks. We'll take a walk around and show you what's going on. We've got a few things to harvest and a couple of things to plant as well. So let's go take a look. Oh, there you are. I almost couldn't see you behind all of this <laughs> lush greenery. Right, look at how these sunflowers are coming. Oh my goodness, look how big this one is. Yeah, they almost need staking, hey? Oh! Do you want to give us a quick tour? Because it is really hot out here and I don't know if I can last that long. It has been roasting for this week. Temperatures up in the high 30s, if not 40, which has been really good for the garden. So many things have really taken off but it's also now becoming a bit of a disaster zone in here. I mean, a few things falling over. I know. We do need to come and do a bit of thinning out. So this bed, bed number seven for us, because number one is that side, is all of our melons. There is three different varieties in here. We did plant a little bit too aggressively, so we will do some thinning out, probably this evening when it cools down a bit. <laughs> but... These ones is a new variety for us. It's called Sugar Baby. Now these are an earlier watermelon than normal and they're much smaller. So I think these have got, we've got a handful of them in here, maybe another two or three weeks and then they'll come out. I'm hoping to make cordial from all of these. I'm also hoping that once we take these off, another couple will pop along. I can see four from here. Yeah. So that's probably enough anyway. Tiny ones in here. Oh yeah, a couple of supper greens. Nice. Oh yeah, that's what that is. There is another variety in here as well. Isn't there like a cantaloupe one? But I came down the other day and I couldn't see any fruit yet. Loads and loads of flowers. Anyway, melons. Melons. Tons of them. <laughs> no, they will come. <laughs> this bed is a mix. It was meant to be mostly peppers, which there is at the top. But then there's uh, an eggplant and a tomato and a melon here in the middle <laughs> and some sunflowers. Uh, and again, we have not pruned our tomatoes, so they're going a bit crazy. Yeah. So we do need to prune and decide on which one we're going to keep as our, our leader. And then mostly because when we did the labeling, we had these small little plastic labels and the sun uh, removed the text off of the labels. So when I went to plant them out, I didn't know if they were cherry tomatoes or normal tomatoes. So we didn't know if they're meant to be big and bushy or if they're meant to be the normal kind of one liter one. So that's something I'm gonna work on for next year so that we know what we're planting where so we know how to do the, the pruning. Let's go take a look at these sunflowers. They look amazing. Okay. So I, I think there were two different varieties. I, I'm guessing that this is the giant sunflowers. <laughs> what gave it away? <laughs> yeah. And then the other ones were some sunflower seeds that we got from one of our wonderful club members. Yeah, they're doing well. And next year, I think I'll put them in all the beds, top and bottom. They look so beautiful when they, when they come up in flower. Yeah, we've mostly focused on growing vegetables down here because we really like to cook and we like to have varieties of things in the garden that we can't buy in the supermarket. But seeing the sunflowers at the ends of all these beds really makes me want to grow more flowers next year. They're great for the bees, but they also just add some colour to the garden. And so maybe we'll do some research on some flowery things that go well with vegetables. So if you have any suggestions, do drop a comment down below and uh, maybe we'll put some more flowers into the garden next year. Uh, I need to go and get a tray because we need to add to our courgette problem inside. You can start harvesting. Yeah, yeah, I can. So this bed here, is an entire bed of courgette plants, which was a mistake. <laughs> well, this is the year we're going to learn how to solve the courgette problem. We like courgettes. They're super versatile. There's loads of different ways that you can cook with them. And we know that we can make wine from them if we end up with too many. We came down here a couple of days ago and we harvested eight and a half kilos of courgettes from these six plants here. And we've been starting to come up with some recipe ideas to do like a mini series of what to do with courgettes because it's such a common problem. In fact, we had a barbecue the other day and almost everybody bought something to do with courgettes because they've all got the same problem. <laughs> Everybody's growing courgettes, they grow really well and you end up with loads of them. So one of the things that we're trying to do, although somewhat failing, is to pick them small and young. So almost like baby size 
or at least try to get them small before they turn into these like giant marrow things because you can put like two or three small ones into a dish for two people but if you have a massive marrowy one then you almost have to cut it in half and then find something else to do with the other half. So we have some courgette cooking videos in the pipeline. We're gonna put them out as extra videos rather than taking up, you know, the next four months of Saturday slots with courgette cooking. So if you wanna see all of the weird and wonderful ideas that we've got for working with courgettes, hit the subscribe button and you will get those videos very, very soon. I'm not taking all of them. Okay. All right, just twist them off and it doesn't always work. And that's what tells me it's a little bit premature. Really? Yeah, if you, I can twist them up really easily if they're, if they're okay. I think that's still growing. Anyway, right. get that one. Okay, that was much easier. Yeah, that's a decent sized one. Oh, that's not so bad actually not, for not a morning. Not too bad. Um, I do need to come in and just prune off all the oldest leaves as well. They're starting to Well, we can up. barely see the path, yep. so. <laughs> More pruning required this evening. So we've got another bed with some beautiful sunflowers. These are the smaller ones. I've pruned these a little bit to stop them going into the tomato bed so that they're all coming this way. What's interesting about these ones is they seem to put off multiple flowers from one stem. Yeah, different to those ones that just have the single. And then the tomato jungle. So these are the tomatoes that we sowed mm. from seed. They're just starting to get some fruit on now. We haven't done a great job of pruning once again. So I think they've spent a little bit too much of their energy putting off new shoots and stuff. But there's loads of flowers, so they are going to come. Oh, these are nice looking cherries. Oh, these are the black cherries down this end somewhere. Oh, cool. And there is lots of fruit in here. I just couldn't see it before because they're still quite green. So maybe we haven't done such a bad job. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a nice surprise. Yeah. And then I'm really looking forward to seeing this variety. This is the one that I thought had this um, eggplant type leaf structure. Oh, slightly yeah. Slightly different to this leaf structure. And they are also a cherry, it looks like. Oh, really? Maybe. Ah, okay. I was expecting a bigger fruit with such a big yeah. leaf. My, my weaving technology has not been as good as it should be. Anyway, that's the tomato situation. Hopefully we have a tomato problem soon. <laughs> so this bed looks very sad, but this is actually intentional. This is our onions that we sowed from sets earlier this spring, and now they're pretty much ready to come out. So I think when we're done with this little tour, uh, we're going to harvest all the onions and we have something quite interesting to go in in their place which we'll talk about a bit later on. One thing that has been a bit of an issue in this onion bed is the voles but also I think cats. <laughs> so they've definitely been digging things up a little bit. They've been digging for the voles. Maybe they've been <laughs> digging for the voles. So this bed has mostly got shop-bought plants so mm. all the tomatoes and these eggplant aubergine and the padrons is oh wow, right? there's loads of padron peppers, yeah. I know. And then it's got a couple of infills. So this was ours, and maybe this was ours. I can't remember. <laughs> it's a bit of a mismatch again. Mm. <laughs> Mostly doing okay. We did have a little bit of a problem early on with these tomato plants. Oh, we thought they had blight. Yeah, and they seem to have recovered fine. So clearly wasn't blight, but we just cut off everything that was not looking good, and now they seem to be mostly okay. Um, these tomatoes need more clips. They're definitely falling over a little bit yeah. under the weight of the I fruit. Just need to, I, haven't, I haven't done any weaving on these and I think they need it. Take us around to the final bed. So we have some onions there again from early planting. And then three loofers who have just started to flower and I might go along and manually pollinate them. So they have male flowers and female flowers, you need to match them together. Oh, is that how that works? <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned that it's so late in the season. I'm not too sure if they're gonna get some decent sized ones. We'll see. But it's amazing how much it's grown in just a few weeks. Yeah, just even in the last five days. I mean, they were almost like tiny plug plants yep. when we last showed them. And now they're all over this trellis. So these are pickling cucumbers. We have harvested off here quite a bit already and been eating them as slightly oversized pickling cucumbers fresh. And we haven't actually got to the pickling stage yet because we haven't had too many that we need to pickle. We're just eating them. A little bit slower this year, everything in the garden. And a bit later, I think. Yeah, it's late July. Um, 
I mean, the courgettes are doing fine, but everything else should already cause, be causing us a problem, and it's not. <laughs> so this is a good thing. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing. There's a couple of squash plants here that I snuck in. So this one has doing really well, and the plan was to take this chard out, but it actually seems to be doing okay with the chard there, and the chickens are still eating the chard. There's another one hiding under there. It's not doing as well, and I think it's because it doesn't get as much sun. Let me just move this cabbage out of the way. <laughs> okay, so the squash are doing okay then? Looks like it, hey? <laughs> uh, I mean, they're spreading, but again, no fruit yet. So these should be all butternut. Mm. Oh, no, I tell a lie, we have some fruit. That's good. I think this one might be the red curry, and I think this is the muscat. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. And then in here we had, uh, I think this is the volunteer one that we left to, uh, yeah. to see what it was going to be. I still can't tell. <laughs> I'm hoping it's this one that produces these big blue ones. We'll see. That's another muscat. The muscat has this really different pattern. Oh, the different leaves. leaf pattern, yeah. This one I think is a red curry as well, so is that one. Again, just not many flowers and fruits yet. Maybe in the next week or so. And the asparagus is trying to get in on the action. <laughs> uh, there's lots of strawberries in there we need to harvest as well. That'll be this evening in the cooler. And then we dotted those squares around the garden for the excess squashes. They've just started to take off. So they're a bit behind these guys, which is good. Um, so succession planning, I think, is what we call it. <laughs> so that is the main garden. We call it the market garden, even though it's just for ourselves. Uh, these are all no-dig beds of various shapes and sizes. We also have some raised beds as well. So we'll go and have a look at those. There's lots of lettuce, and the chickens are loving it. Um, now the shade cover is 100% needed in this weather, it's, otherwise it all wilts. There's a lot of beetroot coming up. And I still haven't learned that spinach doesn't do well on this summer here. It, uh, it just all bolts. Some radish, which we'll probably have to start thinning out pretty soon, because there's some good looking ones in there. So we'll start adding those to our salad. I did also put loads of chard in here, but again, I think it just might not make it. I think, it, again, it's too hot for the chard to kick on. Oh, there's one over there. I mean, this chard is from a long time ago become a tree. I went crazy with seeding the lettuce through here and we've just been slowly thinning it out and using it up and these ones were more regularly spaced. Oh there's some more radish in there I think. Is that radish? No it's a uh, rocket. Oh a rocket yes I forgot I put that in there. Which is a bit early because it's been attacked by the flea beetle. Yeah. But that's okay. Well, it's still edible. Chickens still like it. It's doing fine for a greens bed in 30 something degrees heat. So last up in the last two raised beds, we've got our herbs and our carrots and parsnips. The herbs are doing really well. I guess we've got some fairly sun loving or warmth loving herbs because we like to grow some stuff that is a little bit more exotic, although that sounds like a big word for what it is. We've got some lemongrass in here, which is doing quite nicely. Some Thai basil, some normal basil. We've got coriander, which is going to seed, but that's fine because then we can have coriander seed. Uh, it looks like some of the Thai basil is also starting to flower. Um, but we'll just kind of pinch those off. Uh, they also work really well in salads. The lemon verbena is still a big problem. We gave it a massive haircut a month ago and it feels like it's doubled in size again. But I'm doing an experiment, again based on a comment from one of you lovely people. I took some shoots from the verbena and I just stuffed it into a bottle of gin. And I'm hoping for a rather tasty flavoured spirit in the not too distant future. Uh, so we'll keep you posted on that one. Also looks like this uh, echinacea is taking over as well. Yeah. I need to do some research. I planted this to make some salves and whatnot, which of course I don't have time to do. <laughs> so in the meantime, they're just here for the bees. Oh, and the bees love them though. I might find some time to see what I need to do to these to make something out of it. Do you want to talk about your carrots and parsnips? Yeah. So there's lots of carrots. And a few parsnips. Yeah, so the parsnips just looking to see if any actually made it. There are a couple, so there's meant to be two rows, one down the middle here and one along the edge. There's a couple in there that made it. There's more in here that made it. Now these were the new seeds. No, actually there was an old seed and then I reseeded with new seeds. Both seem to have germinated just at different rates. 
Oh uh, yeah, nice. So, I know they are super slow growing, yeah, and they seem to be really fragile compared to the carrot tops. So there we go, that is a tour of the garden. As you can see, it's come on hugely in just a few weeks. We have some work to come and do in here, but it is too hot to spend too long out here this morning. So we are gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna clear the onions and we're gonna plant something in their place. What else are we doing? Planting a few things and then we're gonna do some seeding of the broccoli. Oh yeah, we can do that. They're all the same varieties, right? Uh, I think these are all brown ones in here. There may be a, uh, there's a red one here, but that one didn't really get going. So we'll just chuck these in here. Well, and the cats have also been The cats have been everywhere. Here. Yeah, these are a decent size. Interesting that they, they're that, not though. as big no. as the ones that we do over the winter. Yeah. But in a way that's good because I always go looking for the small ones for a dish. What I'm really fearing though is we do this and then the cats come in here. So we're actually doing two different sowings in the two different areas that we had onions. This small patch at the top of bed number one here, we're going to be putting in some purple carrots. We did these last year or the year before, I don't remember, and they did really well, but not as well as the normal orange carrots that we did at the same time. But we did them a bit later, and so they took a long time to get going during the winter. So we're doing them a little bit earlier. I think these can be sown so direct August to November. So I think last time we did them more like at the November end of the spectrum. Uh, doing them in August, they should get a little bit more warmth and light and hopefully that means we get them going a little bit sooner. So we're gonna direct sow these, just a couple of rows, and we might do a few more a little bit later on when we clear some more space somewhere else in the garden. That's quite refreshing. <laughs> no, that's too refreshing. <laughs> feels a little bit risky to be putting carrots in when it's this hot because you need to really keep the carrot seeds moist but this place gets quite a bit of shade from this and also from the olive tree and then we'll do the plank thing again yeah we'll that just, seems to work really well we'll just see if it works Oops. Oops. well these are a bit bigger than normal carrot seed That one could go there. That'll do. Some larger ones, smaller ones. Some spring onion size. <laughs> but that's nice to have the variety. Yeah, it is. Oh, look at that monster. Nice. Just leave all the debris here, right? Because the yeah, next yeah, crop yeah. isn't going to care about that. No, exactly. So going in where the onions just came out is a new one for us, which is peanuts or ground nuts or amendoinge, if you are speaking some kind of Portuguese. We've got a small packet here that we got from, I believe a website called growit.pt, or it may have been the garden center in uh, Avalar that we go to quite frequently. Uh, there's not many in here, but I think the spacing is quite far apart. It says maybe two rows of 40 centimeters apart with 70 centimeters between plants. So our beds are five meters long by 80 centimeters wide. So we'll see how many we can fit in here, but I believe they are a bit like a sweet potato. So we'll put a few plants in, we'll put a few nuts in, and they're gonna spread out quite a lot. But one thing that I love to make is homemade peanut butter. And I think it'd be really cool to do like a end-to-end -end sowing to harvest to making kind of video. So hopefully we can show you that at some point in the future. You're very noisy. Sorry, let's see how many we have. How many? Huh. Ah. It's the actual whole thing. Now, I don't know if you then have to split them in half. I feel a, uh, a quick Googling moment coming on. No, because in here there is two nuts, right? And they act as a seed. So surely you do break them in half and take them out of the shell. Well, let's check. Let's check. So Kylie has gone off to get her phone to uh, do some research, but let's see if we can work with what we are given on the packet, which is unfortunately in Portuguese, um, but let's see if we can work this out. So amendoim de ciclo anual, so uh, annual cycle, I guess. 
com 30 a 50 centímetros de altura, so 30 to 50 centimeters high, de flor amarela, yellow flowers. Após fecundação, forma um ovário a 3 a 10 centímetros, can't say that word, de profundidade no solo. So I think it's like make a, a ditch 3 to 10 centimeters deep in the soil, onde se vão desenvolver as vagens, três a quatro. So three or four seeds, I think it's just stick them in the ground. So the whole thing in the, uh, in the shell. There's only three or four of these, so that should work. A sementeira deve ser feita em solo fertil e bem drenado. So, uh, so in, uh, or should be sowed, or should be made in fertile soil with good drainage. The harvest will be effective 60 to 75 days after flowering. Uh, it's intolerant to something. Guiadas. No, no idea what that is. I will do some uh, research myself later on. Uh, I think we're going to make a trench and chuck some seeds in the ground. I have uh, done my best translation. All right, well, let's see if the internet matches up. So the first thing was whether or not you plant the whole thing or you take them out of the outer shell. And the internet says you can do either. <laughs> the important thing is if you do take them out of the shell, not to take the red lining off the individual nut. Okay, good to know. In a trench one and a half to two inches deep, 50 to 70 centimeters apart, in well-draining soil, not in clay. Ah, we good. have clay under all of our newly built soil. So we'll see if it's going to work or not. And if not, we'll do a raised bed style or some other amended soil type in the future. So funnily enough, that is exactly what I translated. Is it? <laughs> I'm sure. We've got a five meter bed. We've got four nuts in their husk. We're gonna go simple and just stick four things in the ground, fairly evenly spaced. And hopefully, We've got a load of peanuts later on. When I was living in Zambia and I was growing groundnuts with my students, I remember that the plants are really big and bushy and they plant them in rows and then you can kind of walk between the rows. So we need to put these in the middle of the beds uh -huh. because otherwise we're not going to be able to walk down our very small paths here. 30 to 50 centimeters in height, according to my translation. Yeah, big so quite and bushy. Tall. And do the nuts grow under the ground yes, or on the bush? Correct. No, under the ground oh, right. like, okay. like, like a sweet tuba. potatoes. Like and a you tuba. can mound them a little bit as well. So you can actually grow them in a mound and put the ah. put the trench down the mound. And that's kind of what I was saying. If, if this doesn't work with going into the ground here, we could actually create a mounded bed in the future and plant into the top of the mound and then they will, will go down into that. But the mound has to be quite wide. I mean, I remember the mounds being maybe even wider than this bed. Mm -hmm. It was a long time ago. All and right. your memory's not what it used to be. Exactly. And I never planted ground nuts. My students did all of that, and I just remember well, seeing it. Well, today, you are my student. <laughs> uh, well, let's place them, and then we yes, can move exactly. them. Yes, exactly. I was going to go there, there. Oh, yeah, because we have more space down here. I thought that was a halfway mark, but maybe not. Yeah, so maybe these two can come down this way a bit more. So about 10 centimetres deep. Or two inches, as the internet says. Well, the internet is Predominantly saying shallower American. than uh, like that? the Portuguese packet. A bit more than that. I'm going there. That's, that's like two inches, I would say. Just in case I want to come and spot water in between. Yeah, that's a good idea. Then I just know where to spot water. Let's do the next one a little bit deeper. All right. In the name of science. You're going to remember which one you did deeper? No, but I've got a video. <laughs> Can you jam that in with your muscles? So hopefully you caught all of the uh, planting of the ground nuts. The uh, camera turned itself off because it overheated. And I'm also starting to overheat. So I think we're going to wrap this up, but we have lots more stuff coming very soon. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, we're going to do some cooking videos, but also some preserving videos with the courgette and soon the tomatoes and the peppers and the aubergines and the melons and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think we're also gonna restart our kombucha brewing as well. So hopefully we'll have a video on that kind of soon. We're also gonna do some beer brewing. We've got a batch of mead on the go. So loads of stuff to look forward to. And of course, more gardening as well. 
So we'll come back here in about a month's time so we can show you as much as possible as the season progresses and then as we go into the autumn and winter sowings and plantings as well. Speaking of sowings, Kylie's gone off to the deck to sow some purple sprouting broccoli, some early purple sprouting broccoli. So we'll have some of that to plant in the future. Anyway, we're gonna leave it there for now because it is stinking hot out here. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Can you shout bye? I don't think she heard me. Oh well.